Okay. Pinchas, Phithalia, chapter 28, verse 1. Verse Aleph. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel and say to them, My offering, my food, for my fire offerings, a spirit of, satis of satisfaction for me, you shall take care to offer it to me at this appointed time. So now that we're going to have this whole transfer of power, we have to do a korban. You shall say to them, This is the fire offering for which you shall offer to the Lord two unblemished lambs in their first year each day as a continued burnt offering. Doesn't this sound a little bit like Yom Kippur? But this is every day. Okay. With one lamb you shall offer up in the morning, and the other lamb you shall offer up in the afternoon. So this is Shachri and Milcha. One tenth of an ephah of the fine flour of for the meal offering, uh, mixed with a quarter of hin of crushed olive oil. A continued burnt offering as one offered up on Mount Sinai for the spirit of satisfaction, a fire offering for the Lord. Now, God doesn't really need this. this isn't, uh, God doesn't need any of this. So, but of course, it's worded in a way that we can understand that we're doing it for God, but God doesn't. God doesn't smell anything. God doesn't have a sense of satisfaction. This Rambam in the Book of Mormon, God from the Perplexity, really explains all this, everything that's going on with the whole thing of what, 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 you know, how do we really understand Hashem? Of course, he ultimately says that we really can't comprehend Hashem at all. But like, there's levels to this, right? So why does the Torah speak like this? That's a different question. Is libation shall be one quarter of a hen for each lamb to be poured onto the holy altar as a libation of a strong wine to the Lord. And a second lamb you shall offer up in the afternoon. You shall offer it up with the same meal offering and libation as the morning sacrifice. A fire offering with the spirit of satisfaction to the Lord. So here we're getting into what we call shachri or mecha, 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 mecha. And on the Shabbat day, two unblemished lambs in the first year on the tenth, two tenths of an ephah of fine flour as a meal offering mixed with horn oil offering and libation, because we also have to have Shachri and Milcha. But where's Mariv? How come we're not talking about Mariv? Well, is there not an offering in the evening? So Mariv's not really mentioned here. This is a burnt offering on each Sabbath, uh, each Sabbath uh, and on its Sabbath, in addition to the continuum offering and its libation. So now there's what we call Musaf. And at the beginning of your months, you shall offer up a burnt offering of the Lord, two young bulls, one ram and seven lambs in the first year, all unblemished. So every month you have to do this. And we don't do any of this anymore. We haven't done it for thousands of years. What we do now is we use a C-door. And we, and we say the same words all the time. Three tenths of an ephah of the fine flour as a meal offering mixed with the oil for each bowl. Two tenths of an ephah of fine flour as a meal offering mixed with the oil for each ram. One tenth of an ephah of a fine flour mixed with the oil as a meal offering on each lamb. Burnt author, a burnt offering with a spirit satisfaction, a fire offering to the Lord. See, it's a burnt offering. We're not even eating any of these. We're not even eating this. Like, we're not, so we knew how to burn things. We knew how to give fire offerings. So all those people say, oh, you know, the only reason that Jews don't eat. No, I remember I heard this once when I was in college, and I may have said this in a previous video. Anyways, people would say, oh, the only reason the Jews and Muslims don't, don't eat pork pig is because of trichinosis, and if they only knew how to cook it, and they knew how to prepare it correctly, they would probably, you know, the only reason they did it is for health reasons. We know how to burn things. Come on, like, we weren't idiots. Like, people, like, want to make out, like, these the ancient Hebrews were idiotic, idiotic people. They, like, knew how to burn things. We, we were burning offerings, that we were not eating them. All the offerings, so these offerings, we weren't eating them. So you can't say it's because of trichinosis and this whole argument about why we don't eat pigs is because of some bacterial disease that pigs have. Now, I'm assuming that if you ate a, a lamb or any other food that you didn't cook properly, you could also get sick from it. So it has nothing to do with health. There's nothing, nothing, nothing to do with health here, physical health. Okay. We also don't eat bears and we don't eat snails. I mean, we don't eat lots of things. And people are like, oh, it's because, you know, they don't eat shrimp and they don't eat lobster because of dirty animals. No, no, like, we don't eat a lot of animals. There's a lot of animals we don't eat. It has nothing to do with what those, I mean, maybe with the birds. And the birds, we don't eat birds that eat other birds, right? Generally, we don't eat birds that eat other birds. But, like, in general, we have to have a masora for birds because whatever the whole thing about birds is this whole different other thing that I'm not going to get into so much. But the point is it has nothing to do with physical health. And there are libations of man, uh, half a hen for each bull, a third of a hen for each ram, and a quarter of a hen for each lamb wine. This is the burnt offering of each new month in its month throughout the months of the year. And one young male goes for a sin offering to the Lord. It shall be offered up in addition to the continued burnt offering and its libation. What sin? What is the chet? What did we do wrong? 
Like, if we're following all the rules, we're doing everything, why do I have to give a sin offering? I'll tell you why. Because we're not perfect. We're not perfect. We're not robots. Nothing's robotic. We're not robots. We're going to make mistakes. And so we just have to, like, assume that mistakes are in the system. And because we're error, like, to err is the human, right? There's a famous line, to err is the human. So God puts that into the Torah. God, like, knows us better than we know ourselves. So God puts us in a sin offering, like, but you have to say, oh, wait a minute, but I'm doing everything right. I'm such a perfect guy. I'm such a, I'm such a righteous religious guy. I'm a Haredi, I'm a I'm a Mahadran. I keep only, but I need to keep the most kosher ever. Like, come on. I'm like, I'm super religious. No, you know what? You too, even you, Mr. Super Religious, you, however you, however religious you think you are, and you know, Haredi you think you are, guess what? You have a sin offering, you have to do it too. Nobody is immune from this.